All right, we'll go ahead and get started here. So hello again, everyone, and thank you all again for joining us today. My name is Megan Mendiola, and I'm a Regional Marketing Coordinator here at JMT. We're very excited to have Terry Grin and Brittany Shelley here to lead us in our webinar today. Terry is a Senior Channel Manager of VAR Partnerships at Avid Exchange, and Brittany is a Manager of Partner Markets at Avid Exchange as well. Um, so I'll share just a couple housekeeping notes with everyone before I turn it over to Terry to get us started. If you have any questions during the webinar today, please go ahead and sub submit those into the Q&A section on your control panel. We'll go ahead and save all those questions until the end of the presentation, but please don't hesitate to go ahead and to submit those as you think of them. Also, just a reminder that we will send you both the slides and recording of today's webinar within 24 hours after it has concluded. Um, and so with that, I won't take up any more of Terry's time, so I'll go ahead and turn it over to him to get us started. Super, thank you, Megan, so much. Um, first of all, I'd just like to thank everybody for joining us today. Um, hopefully everybody out there is staying safe and uh, having fun working remotely. Um, like Megan said, I, my name is Terry Grin. I'm the Senior Channel Manager, um, and I work with our resellers like JMT. Um, so today, I'm going to go over the agenda here. We're going to first talk about the state of the business continuity today. Then we'll get into five steps to implement business continuity. Then we'll talk about how AP Automation can help you with that business continuity. Um, then we'll have a special offer from Avid Exchange, and then we'll go into our Q&A at the end. Hopefully that works for everybody. So the state of business continuity today, um, nearly 34% of companies surveyed have either no business continuity plan in place or a plan they would consider comprehensive in the face of unpredictable natural disasters or emergency, kind of like what we're having right now. Um, and less than 50% of those businesses have a continuity plan that would account for emergency across multiple geographical areas simultaneously. Um, like some of them will have a plan in place if there's a hurricane and they're located in, say, Houston, like we were when we had a problem with the last hurricane in Houston and we were able to um, have business continuity and work out of our Charlotte and Salt Lake City offices. But a lot of companies don't have that in place. 22% um, of um, have a plan that can stay in their businesses for two months. Um, so if it's a short term, you know, like a hurricane, it might be a few weeks or something like that, you're, you're in business. But right now, with the uncertainty, and, and we're definitely at two months now, um, so you need to have a plan in place. So let's talk about preparing your, your AP team for business continuity and these five steps. Um, first, let's um, identify the resources, you know, um, category, sorry, categorize issues and severity, um, defining risks and impact, and then align risk mitigation strategies and educate and train. So identifying the right resources. Um, first of all, um, to identify those, you've got to think about who's in charge of the plan. If there's an emergency, what resources in your department would be affected and which are mission critical. Uh, critical sources for the accounting department likely include staff, infrastructure, and technology. So from an AP standpoint, typically you have an AP manager who would run the be on the team. Um, it's very critical that they identify the individuals that will either need to come on, come into the office if there's no remote policy in place, um, or at the very least identify he, who needs equipment to be able to take home so that they can enter those invoices and keep that process going. The plan is only as good as the people in the practice. So when I think about who are the right resources, I think for many organizations, it's important to have a cross-functional team with good leadership. Sorry, let me go over here, Ian. Um, that team would exist to come up with any documentation or refresh documentation once a year. Um, this team should be a mix of individuals across the business. In fact, a project leader for the team doesn't have to necessarily um, be that AP manager. It could be a tech leader, a facilities leader, um, or a finance leader, or maybe even an operational leader. What's important is that the team be seen as an important cross-functional group within the company. Um, also, as people get promoted or leave the business and change roles, um, you should always be thinking about who can be the backfill. 
So identifying types of severity and risks of resources, uh, you want to establish categories for the key issues like technology issues, staff issues, workplace, and even ransomware attacks. And if you want a list of possible disturbances in each category, um, things like power issues, hardware disruption, and within that we're dealing with today, um, thank goodness there's no power issues, but it gets back to what I mentioned earlier about working remotely. Um, I know that typically in the past, AP teams weren't viewed as teams that would necessarily work remote or even could work remote, but now with laptops and the technology we have today, you should enable your team, AP team to be able to work um, remote and take the those um, things home that they need to use, um, either like a laptop or printer, they need to print checks. Um, and of course, if your invoices are still being received through the mail, uh, you need to identify someone to go in and pick those up. So making sure it's a business as usual, as best it can be. Um, still be functioning in terms of the invoice entry and in terms of payments being made. Um, there are cycles like your operational process, consider all steps in your supply chain, not only with your employees, but the vendors that you rely on. Um, it should be an exercise to get as complete of an inventory as possible in order to help you think through what those risks might be. Now let's define the risks and their impact on the process. So we'll talk a little bit about internal and external fraud, payment delays, as I've mentioned, payment processing errors and accessible accounting doc documents. Um, so if I'm in manual AP world, uh, where you're still filing invoices and still making copies of those checks and filing those with the invoices, and you know that documentation is usually at the office. So, you know, once again, you've got to make that, um, you have people identified so they can go in and follow those local and government regulations in terms of social distancing. Again, payment delays is the first thing that jumps out to me and I'm sure businesses are going to work with each other to help that, but things like payment processing errors, you should really have a plan in place um, before any kind of natural disaster occurs so that you can run um, reports and track progress. So formulate and deploy the method to mitigate those risks. Um, so now we're going to talk about um, how to do that. So things like providing your team with the right resources, leveraging technology, what redundancy is in place, and consider automating key processes, including AP. Uh, from an AP perspective, it's very important that teams can continue with their daily tasks. If laptops are not an option, maybe even take their PCs home. Um, you may need to consider bringing your check printer home so the checks can be printed and then taken into the post office to mail. Um, you definitely want to leverage technology in order to automate these processes and really be able to access that information from anywhere. Um, it's super important that you understand how employees in your critical departments and functions will continue to access the internet for important applications. So a good way to do that is to educate and train your staff. Um, distribute the plan and have all critical teams read it. Um, schedule training sessions. Include role-playing scenarios. Um, include a variety of those scenarios, um, like preventing events, discovering issues, and correcting the problems before they happen. And simulated disaster tests for your company's ability to respond. Um, think of it this way. Tell me something maybe, you know, for a little bit, show me, maybe I'll remember a little bit longer, but if you do that and have all have a sustained memory, um, also do those, doing this is key here in the scenario of planning, Just plan, plan, plan. Um, so let's recap. So first you wanna identify the resources, categorize issues and severity, define the risks and impact of those, and align risk mitigation strategies and educate and train. So let's jump into it now and kind of talk about how AP automation can help. Um, business continuity and AP said 45% said automation technology would be extremely helpful preparing for future business continuity needs. 54% of AP professionals say working from home would have a significant to extremely high impact on their finance team's ability to process invoices. 
and 40% of businesses stated that they would make at least some late payments if the finance staff had to work remotely, with 12% believing all payments would be late. Like I stated before, um, automation can help take some of these burdens off your team. Uh, next, I'll discuss what the core benefits of AP automation for your business continuity. Um, so benefits of automating the, for business continuity, AP automation provides a central hub for all your payment related files. Um, activating your business continuity plan likely means that you can be in the office, um, can't be in the office, sifting through filing cabinets. You want to be able to qu quickly access any payment related files with the click of a button. Um, AP automation provides a cloud based central repository, so you don't have to rely on those file cabinets horrible filing cabinets. And because it's in the cloud, everyone can access it from anywhere that you give the ability to view that information. Um, anytime, anywhere, access to review and approve invoices. Um, in a manual process, in a manual process, reviewing and approving invoices can take days and include many different approvers. Waiting on approvals slows down the payment process, which could lead to late payment. Um, and the level of difficult, difficulty multiplies if you're not in the office. With AP Automation, you don't have to be in a specific location. Um, you can approve invoices and make payments. All you need is internet access, and you can view and improve from your phone or laptop. Um, you can also have sophisticated reports, um, anything that you need. Electronic payments provide um, easy paper check alternatives and service teams can improve your supplier relationships. So let's kind of jump into AP Automation with Avid Exchange. Avid Exchange processes over 12 million payments annually for companies like yours. Um, we have over 1,400 employees. Uh, 400 of those service members are dedicated to the payment onboarding and processing. So we have 400 people making payments for you on your behalf. We add over 1,000 suppliers per week to our network. We have over 600,000 active suppliers um, that are submitting invoices and accepting payments from Avid Exchange. Um, we have integrated with over 150 different accounting systems, and we have over 5,500 customers. So we work with a lot of companies out there. So. Our solution has two basic automation solutions, the invoice processing and the payment processing. So let's kind of talk briefly about the Avid Invoice product. So eliminate the touch points to pay and receive money faster. So this is a basic paper-based manual process where the invoice comes in, somebody has to open the mail, route it, code it, get it approved, manually enter that data into your ERP system. Um, select it for payment, make that payment, do your Beck reconciliation, follow up, and then file the invoice to go back and view later if needed. With automation, um, we take that down to three, what we consider business um, pertinent business um, selections here. So you can code and approve and select. Um, everything else is taken over by our software and service. So all that invoice capture, we're taking care of that. Um, and there's three ways to get invoices to Avid Exchange. Um, one is email. So we would set up an, a dedicated email address for suppliers to send electronically. Um, if you need to, you can scan um, or your customers can scan directly into Avid. Um, and then there's the old fashioned snail mail, paper mail. Um, we set up a designated lockbox that we gather, gather those invoices into twice a day. Um, so Avid Exchange receives the invoice. They will extract all the header detail around the invoice, including PO numbers, and submit their invoice application. Um, Avid Exchange invoices will initiate the, the approval on the invoice based on a predefined rules, conditions, or logic, you name it. There's all kinds of ways. There's all kinds of information. You can set up as many workflows and have as many approvers in the system as you need. So once those invoices are in, um, our standard SLA is 24 hours from the time we receive that invoice to when it gets into the system. Um, a notification will go out to that person who is responsible for those invoices. Um, and this is where they can log into. And in that email, there is a link that they can click on to come into Avid Invoice to be able to review um, and approve those invoices. They come up to the list in here. And when I talk about the workflows, like I said, you could have as many workflows and as many as approvers as you would like. If you have different locations or subsidiaries, 
You can have each one of those go to a different workflow. It's up to you. You can set those up however you would like. Um, but you can see on the left side here, this is all the pertinent data, like the invoice number, the invoice total, invoice date, the posting date, all of the information on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side here, you can see the um, supplier information or the actual image. So we actually scan an image. If there's 50 pages to that invoice, all 50 pages are going to be in there. Um, down below here, um, this is where you would do the coding. So if you want to code each one of those individual line items, you can do that. If it's just one code for the entire invoice, that's fantastic. Um, we also allow you to do attachments. So if you need to attach something to that invoice, you can do that and store it in here as well. Um, you can have an ad hoc approver. So if somebody is out of the office or not able to approve that invoice, you can bypass them, have somebody else review and approve that invoice. And also we have a history tab here. So anyone, we keep track of anyone, date and timestamp that has touched, reviewed and approved that invoice. So we make a suggestion during the demo that never put anything in there that you don't want others to see. Like ah, I had to approve this invoice, my coworker is such a knucklehead because that is in there forever. And one of the other great things about this system is if you have audits, um, you can give your auditor read-only access and they can come in and review those invoices electronically. No longer will you have to sit in front of a filing cabinet and pull out invoices and give them to the auditor, or have the auditor do it, which takes time. Time is money. Um, less time the auditor spend in your office, the less it's going to cost you, hopefully. So let's talk about Avid Pay. The power of the network. So right from the beginning, um, we have about a 40% average of e-payment adoption. That means that 40% of your vendors, we will get to adopt an electronic form of payment. Um, those methods are um, our Avid Pay Direct, um, the MasterCard um, virtual card, and then check. Um, we have an average of 28% um, coverage from like I said, day one. So if you send us a, your vendor list, on average, about 28% of those are already in the Avid Pay network. Um, we also have a product called our utility product. We have over 4,000 utility suppliers. This is a great product. If you have multiple locations with multiple utility bills, um, our utility service team uh, monitors those bills. Um, if there's any abnormalities in those bills, um, we want to make sure that your vendors, your your utilities get paid because it's hard to work when the power or water or anything gets shut off. So that's another great product. Um, we have over 30,000 ADP, which is our Avid Pay Direct solution. And we have over 200,000 e-payment suppliers enrolled, which means we have over 200,000 suppliers that are taking virtual card. So this just kind of talks about the Avid Pay network and the process. Um, it's Avid Pay is a full service offering, which includes intuitive software, which gives you and your team control over payment approvals, such as full visibility into all of your payments. Um, Avid Exchange also provides a service component to help reduce manual tasks that take up a lot of your accounting staff's time. Um, it all starts with reviewing your accounting system and selecting those payments that you already you're ready to make on the network. Um, you're going to use that same cash decision process that you would today. Um, for those organizations that have check signers or dual signers, depending on the amount, you can go ahead and set those workflows up um, to review um, all the payments before the funds are withdrawn and submitted before we start the payment process. Um, money is going to be pulled from your bank accounts, and there are three ways that suppliers can get paid. Like I said, the virtual card, our Avid Pay Direct, or check. If they still want to receive a check, we'll cut that check and mail it out on your behalf. Um, so that um, your financial relationships, your team can see full visibility into the status of the payment. Um, if the supplier has applied for that payment, um, if that check has not been clear or cashed yet, we're going to follow up on it. So every payment that you submit to the Avid Pay Network includes what we would call pause pay, like you do with your bank, um, only we don't charge for it like your bank does. So if that check is not cashed, we're going to follow up with that supplier and find out why. If they haven't collected the electronic funds, we're also going to contact them and find out why. We want to make sure your vendors get paid. Um, and we have a team that follows up on all that um, during the first 30 days. Um, we can talk more about that. If you'd like to find out more about any of this, um, please reach out to your JMT rep. Um, they can answer some questions, and if there's, you know, if you would like to see a demo, um, they can also schedule that. We'd be happy to talk to you. Now, 
let's go into the poll questions and Q&A. Great. Thank you so much, Terry. So like Terry said, we kind of want to know the best way to follow up with you. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and launch a poll as we get into our Q&A time. We've had quite a few questions come in already, but I'm going to go ahead and launch this poll. So you should see it um, show up on your screen here. And it's just going to let us know the best way that we can follow up with you, um, whether um, we can follow up with you immediately, maybe in a few weeks. Um, so if you wouldn't mind just taking the time really quickly to vote on that. Um, and while we're kind of waiting for those voting results to come in, we'll go ahead and get into Q&A time here. So Terry, the first question that we had come in is, um, can I send all of my vendor payments through Avid Exchange Pay? Uh, great question, yes. Avid Exchange purposes to accommodate all of your vendor payments. Um, so only the payments that you select to be paid by Avid Exchange will be facilitated. Um, you don't need to, you know, pick, ooh, wow. Sorry about that. Kind of went a little haywire on me. Click through. So the answer is yes, you can send all of your vendor payments to Avid Exchange. Great. Um, good. While you're kind of getting um, back to your other place here, <laughs> we'll go ahead and read a question. I did see a question come through the Q&A that I can address as well. So um, someone asked if we will, if they will have this information available to them after. And the answer is yes, we are going to send you both of these slides that Terry just covered, as well as the recording of today's webinar to you. After the webinar has concluded, we'll get it processed and get it to you through your email. Um, so you can expect to see that um, probably in the next 24 hours here. Um, and just a reminder, if you do have any questions, you can submit them into the Q&A section on your control panel. Um, Terry, the next question we had here, I'll go ahead and um, read it out to you while you're kind of getting back. Um, but this question says, can I still print checks through Avid Exchange? Yeah, if you want to have checks sent out, um, you, can, you can submit those check payments to Avid Exchange and we'll make those on your behalf. Um, we also have the ability to print on microchecks on blank check stock. So if you want to do that, you can. Great, great, thanks. Um, so some more questions that came in, one of them says, will my invoice approval process need to change? So the approval process, you can have what you have in place now. We can work with you to set up the same way you want it to work. Um, and if you don't like it, once it's set up, you can make changes very easily. Whoever the system administrator is can go in there and make changes. You know, if somebody leaves the organization and you want to have somebody else step into that role, um, you can do that all yourself. It's very easy to do. Great, great. Thank you, Terry. Um, we still have some more questions that are coming in, so we'll keep rolling through those. Um, another question that came in um, says, how long does it take to get this all set up? So, great question. We have a 45-day um, implementation guarantee, but it just kind of depends on um, how much time you guys have to help get that information over to us. If, what we do is we set up a kickoff call and we go over all those things that we need to get the system set up. And if we get those back in a timely manner and we, we you work with our team, our implementation team, uh, we can get it done much quicker than 45 days. Great, that's a really fast implementation time. That's awesome. Um, another question that we had is, what does an average profile look like for a solution like this? Who would be a good fit? Um, so anybody who is, is drowning in paper, anybody who is still receiving paper invoices, either by mail, um, even by email, and still having to do that manual data entry, um, if you're getting charged for any of that um, paper being stored in your ERP system, I know some accounting systems out there will, will charge for the additional data, um, and anybody who is still processing paper checks. Um, if you're still sending out paper checks, you know, think about this, you're sending out a piece of paper with all of your information on there. The company name, the address, the routing number, the bank account number. Um, you know, it's much more secure to do a type of virtual, you know, electronic payment, e-payment. Um, but even if we send out a check for you, we're going to include pause pay on that. So we're going to follow up if there's any fraud or if there's anything that happens, that's on Avid Exchange. It's not on you. Great. That's awesome. Um, thank you, Terry. We do have another question that came in. It says, okay. what level of vendor participation is necessary for this system to work? 
So that's one thing about our service teams. You don't have to worry about how many of your vendors want to enroll in the Avid Pay network. We take care of that. You don't need to reach out to your vendors and say, hey, we're signing up with Avid Exchange. Do you guys want to receive an electronic payment? Blah, 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 blah. We take care of all that for you. And chances are, like I said, 28% of your current vendors on average are already in our network and using electronic payments or we're cutting them a check. You don't need to worry about that. We take care of all of that. And there is no minimum number. Um, it's just how your business operates. And if you're growing and see a need to add AP personnel um, because you have a manual process, uh, you know, go with AP automation. You can, you can, it's much easier to scale um, and you don't have to go to the expense of hiring and training and then have somebody leave and then have a gap. Do it electronically. Getting it automated your AP. Yeah, that's fantastic for sure. Um, looks like we have a few more questions that we still have um, that have come Perfect. in. So then, yeah, the next one asks, is there a limit to the number of users? Nope. Um, Avid Exchange is transactionally based on their fees. So it's just by the number of invoices and, and payments that you make, but you can have as many approvers on the Avid invoice side as you need or want. You can have as many workflows set up. Say you have, 10 different locations and those invoices come in for those 10 different locations that each one of those could be a separate workflow if you wanted. However you want to set it up, we can help you do that. Great. That's awesome. Um, the last question that we have that has come in so far um, asks, can you expand on the virtual card? How is that different from an ACH? So a virtual card is a, it's a one-time use virtual card. So when that comes that request for payment comes in, our team spins up a number. It's a one-time use MasterCard number um, for that exact amount to that exact vendor. So if you're say you're paying AT&T, you know, we spin that number up for that exact amount. We either call them or we have an automated system that, that makes that payment, but there's no way that they can change the amount or the payee. So it's much more secure. Um, An ACH, um, and it's much faster. That's the biggest thing is the, the virtual card is like same day. Sometimes the ACH, depending on your bank, um, can take a day or two. The virtual card is faster. Um, and then um, you don't have to create that file and send it to your bank. You could just send one file over to Avid Exchange to make all your payments, and you don't have to worry about how they're being made. Great. That's awesome. Um, that's all the questions that we have so far. We'll give it just another minute or two for any last minute questions that we may have come through. Um, but in the meantime, while we're waiting from those, I just wanted to thank you so much, Terry, for the great presentation um, and you as well, Brittany, for being here today. Um, we just hope that you enjoyed the presentation today um, and that you will join us for future events and webinars as well. You can find out about those by visiting our website at jntconsulting.com and clicking on the events tab. Um, and thank you all who participated in our poll. Um, we will um, be following up with you kind of how in regards of how you answered that. Um, and you should be expecting to hear from us in the next couple of days or so. Um, we did have a couple more questions that came in, Terry. So if you're good to answer Fantastic. a couple more questions. Yeah, Absolutely. so we had someone, yeah, great. We had someone ask if we submit an invoice for payment, the checks that are generated um, are created in house by Avid. Is that correct? So when you create that payment file um, and it's a check, we take that check number that comes from your ERP system and we put it as a reference number on the check. And then there's a separate check number. Um, obviously, because we work with so many different companies out there, there's going to be, you know, same check numbers. So we put your check number on as a reference number and then the account, the, the actual check number is our check number. And we print those out and we mail them out on your behalf. Um, and then that information is, is in the portal for you to view. So you can actually see how that um, vendor was paid, when they were paid, and if that payment has been cashed. Great. That's awesome. Thank you um, for clarifying that, uh, Terry. We have uh, one more question that has just come in. Um, and so just in regards to the virtual card, how much um, do you charge for the virtual card or how much do they charge for the virtual card? So we don't charge anything for it. It's based on, on your relationship with your bank, um, your merchant account, whatever that agreement is on how much they charge per transaction for, for a virtual card. Um, 
We have transactional fees. So every transaction you send over to us to make on your behalf is 89 cents. So, you know, even if it's a check, we're going to cut that check, put it in an envelope and postage all for 89 cents. Um, but we also have a rebate program in place. So any payment that we make on your behalf electronically, either by virtual card or our Avid Pay Direct, um, you qualify for a rebate. So you have the ability to have a great ROI um, and actually get cash back each month, uh, depending on your volume and your spend. Great, that's amazing. Um, so it looks like that is all the questions that we have that have come in so far. So. Um, I think we'll go ahead and conclude the webinar today. Terry, did you have any last words for everyone before we um, conclude the webinar? Nope. Just thank you so much for taking the time out of your day. Um, I know it's kind of difficult right now with everybody working remote and, and trying to find answers, but um, Habit Exchange and JMT are here to help. So hopefully we, we've given you some information to think about, and we look forward to hearing from you soon. Yeah, thank you so much again, uh, Terry. And again, Brittany, thank you for being here as well. Um, we do hope that everyone has a great rest of their day um, and is staying as safe and healthy um, as you can be during this time and just enjoying your time at home um, with families and friends um, who you're living at home with as much as you can. Um, you should be hearing from us in the next 24 hours with just the slides and recording from today's webinar. Um, and then if you did request a contact from a JMT rep, you should be hearing from one of us shortly. So we just want to thank you again for being here and we hope that everyone has a great rest of their day. Bye everyone. Thanks everyone.